Okay, Coach Bearden, welcome back. We've been on a uh, a little bit of a break here on the Barbarian Hour, and we're going to have uh, Coach Andrew Bearden from Lake Erie College here, the assistant coach. Um, we could give you a lot of different titles for Lake Erie College, couldn't we, Coach Bearden? I've been around for, for a minute or two, that's for sure. You've been through all the head coaches, right? Coach Hugenboom, Coach Breeze, and now Coach Boomer Fetchko, correct? Yeah, and sort of my role has kind of evolved with each one of the coaches. But, like, that's the cool thing with, with my, you know, position is that I've been around all three of those guys, um, still consider all three of them friends. I mean, uh, Hoogan Boom and I, we were just hanging out, you know, a couple of weeks ago at Nick Boggs' wedding. Uh, I text with Breeze probably, you know, once, twice a week still, you know, wrestling stuff, life stuff. And, uh, you know, Boomer and I, I mean, we're probably talking two, three, four times a day. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're just so connected into it, but what's odd about it is what well, odd to me is it's not like you're like a Lake County person. You're not like a manor person or a Painesville person or a Perry person. You're from the state of Michigan, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Mittens up. I'm from uh, just over the state line, Monroe, went to Monroe Jefferson high school. And uh, you know, um, after school went down, I was living in Florida, uh, lived in Florida for, probably about four, four and a half years. And my wife's from Linter. So she went to Chanel. That's actually how I got hooked up with Hoogan Boom in the first place is, you know, my wife was a Chanel grad and, um, you know, wanted to, wanted to get back into coaching and uh, long story short, got hooked up with Hoogan Boom. And, you know, we just had a really good like lunch one day and, you know, next thing you know, like I'm in the room, I'm in the room like one or two days a week. Um, and then all of a sudden I'm traveling with the team and then all of a sudden, like, you know, I'm helping with some administrative stuff and then all of a sudden I'm helping with some recruiting stuff and, you know, fast forward now, you know, the big project that I'm kind of undertaking right now is, you know, reestablishing our RTC, you know, doing a lot of fundraising for the RTC. Um, you know, we've got a couple of things planned for U20s in 2024, U23s in 2024. We're going to do a couple of training camps. You know, been talking with uh, the West Point guys, obviously, been talking with like, uh, you know, Cliff Keen and, you know, some of these other more established RTC programs about kind of doing joint training camps. And, you know, so it's exciting. So what's crazy is we grew up um, and I'm older than you. When did you graduate high school? Not much. Oh, one, man. Oh, one. Yeah. So you're you're like three years younger than I am. And you would have been like uh I think a freshman when I was a senior in high school, um, we wrestled Bedford. Bedford yeah. used to be really, 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 really good. Um, obviously in temperance right over the line, you know, I think Bedford and, and Whitmer might be five minutes apart. I think that that sounds right. Yeah, they are. Yeah. My coach, uh, my coach was Ed Brighton. So the coach at Bedford was Denny Brighton. So, you know, um, Yeah. 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 The temperance Bedford back in the day. And, you know, when I was there, my freshman year was when Dundee had won their, their first fourth straight title. So like, I kind of came in when Dundee started that, you know, really dominant run that they've had for the last, whatever, 25 years. Um, and Bedford was kind of starting to like sort of fade out of it a little bit, uh, still really good. And, you know, they still get teams to the, you know, state quarterfinals or state semifinals every now and then. But yeah, it was uh my my coach is actually a Bedford guy. That's crazy to think about it because you know they sustained they've sustained being a really good program. They were the premier program, you know, in Michigan, um, one of the top five programs in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, mm -hmm. and like you said, they've they've had a little bit of a they're not what they used to be now. Is is Kevin Vogel the head coach there now? Yeah. 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 Kevin's still the head coach there. He's been the head coach. I want to say for probably eight, nine years. Yeah, I mean, He's so been there for a little bit. Coach Bogle was, he was a Chippewa, wasn't he? Yeah. So really good guy. And then he was in Ann Arbor with the Wolverines and Cliff Keen for, uh, you know, a, a while there. I know Andy Robat used to train under him and he has nothing but great things to say about the guy, but, um, really good wrestling area and Michigan is just sneaky good in, in, in high school wrestling and they don't get the credit I think they're due. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, with some of the travel rules lessening, I think you're going to start to see maybe a little bit more 
um, you know, the Michigan teams higher up in the national rankings instead of, you know, that, that 20 to 50, which is kind of where we've always had, you know, four or five teams a year. Now I think that, you know, they can get beyond uh, Brexville and, you know, beyond Wadsworth and start going to more and more tournaments. Uh, you'll probably start to see some of those teams hit the, hit the top 15, hit the top 10. They got rid and, of that stupid rule. They got rid of that. Well, they, they've amended it, right? So I think you're you're allowed to go to tournaments where teams are from different states, but that tournament itself, the site, still has to be within like a 300 mile radius of your school. They can go to Ironman. I believe that's the case. Yeah, that, that or... is an absolute game changer. If you ask me, now I get like Beast. They're not going to be able to do Beast, right? Because they can actually meet. I, I want to say it was like may, maybe Mitch Hancock told me might've been Mitch forget who it was. Might have our coach Boudreau. I forget who it was. They could meet Blair Academy in like Pittsburgh. It was one of those guys told me that they could actually duel Blair, but it had to be almost like uh Youngstown or something like that. Cause you couldn't do Pittsburgh. Cause it's gotta be, it had to be touching the state of Michigan. And it was something right. That, that's what the, the law was. That, yeah. That's how it cool. used to be. Yeah, yeah, you had to. You had to. It was well. It was. It was. You. You could. And they had to be touching the. The team had to be touching. Uh, the state of Michigan, so uh, Indiana, Illinois, um, Wisconsin. You, you touch Illinois, right? Well, it's a, it's a water boundary. So they don't. Do they, do they give you the water boundary though? I th I think they do because I think DCC goes out there and wrestles like Montini and some of those teams some years. And then Wisconsin's a water border too, right? Well, Wisconsin borders the Upper Peninsula. No, Upper you Peninsula. Can, you can drive right into it. Yeah. I mean, I teach geography. I should probably know that. And I, <laughs> my wife's uh, cousin, they live in Green Bay, and they have a house in um, Mullet and Burt Lake. Do you know where those are? No, never. Those heard of are them. like. You see what I'm doing here? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. If I'm doing course. it right. Am I doing it right to show you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Either way, I, I Mullet know. and Burt Lake are like up here. Oh, dude, that's I've got They're family. Twenty minutes County. south of the bridge. Yeah, I mean, I've got family in Otsego County, so we're yeah. like 30 minutes south of the bridge. Yeah, uh, Indian River, I want to say, is the town that's kind of closest to that besides Mackinac. And, uh, yeah. Gaylord, Gaylord, too. Gaylord that's, town. yeah, that's that's our city is Gaylord, yeah. Big Buck Brewery. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a uh, growler somewhere around here of it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good wrestling up there, too. I mean, Gaylord's pretty much, you know, I mean, once you get past, like, Lowell, which is over on the west side, but but Gaylord's probably, you know, the best team in the the upper, lower peninsula. Up north, we'll call it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we vacation with the Burnettes up, sometimes up north, sometimes we, we, we've we gone to, uh, geez, we've gone, like, sick. my son Thomas wasn't born yet when we went the first year. And it was like uh Osable. Oh yeah. Do the river, man? Yeah, you yeah. They did they you did the river. Me? I didn't do the river. Yeah. My wife was pregnant. So by the like, way, like I, I I don't want to break any rules, but like that team over there, man, what a freaking summer, dude. What a summer. I, I don't want to break any rules by mentioning names, but like, you know, for one room to have a freaking world champ and then you got like oh, yeah, Pitt, a Pitt, national Pitt, champ. Got a squad. Like Yeah, dude. they do well. They do well. Perrysburg does well. Those are stupid I just, people anyway you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I just saw <laughs> this past weekend, I, I saw a match and, you know, there was an athlete that bumped up a weight class. And, dude, I mean, this kid just totally stalled out against him and he got robbed bad. I just know. watched that. His dad sent he, it to me. It was yeah. like Kepler. Yeah, dude, it was that's sick. That's learning. I think that's what's good about them. I'll tell you what the, those the Burnett's have always done. They've always put that get, kid in positions where he's going to learn through failure and they've always put him out there. And I think that, dude, that's a good thing, man. Yeah. Put people out there yeah. to lose is, is okay. You got to chase losses. Crushing its soul. And I think that that's really good stuff. And I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm just a fan of what they do and how they've always done it. And the, you know, the wife, Jody uh, Burnett is, uh, so she is her, and my wife, she's my wife's roommate in college. So I introduced Scott and Jody. That's the, connection wow. okay and then um so yeah they, they do a really good job of that and i just like their philosophy is pretty good sometimes scotty can get a little uh <laughs> nut jobby and emotional but it's this kid and a lot of people you know get into their kids like that but i don't think the kid's gonna quit the game 
You know, no, I don't man. I mean, he's gonna go. He's gonna. He's got upside left. I think he held better composure for said athlete than what I would have uh, in that position over the weekend. And I, I guess, like, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's a freaking loss in September, so who cares? But like, at the end of the day, I mean, it was it was like a a joke of a match. I mean, I was there. I was sitting right in front of it, so I saw the whole thing, and it was it was bad, dude. It was just bad officiating. Uh, a lot of dive rolls. Yeah. But you got to learn how to protect your Holding ankles. On ankles got to protect yeah. your ankles. You know, that was the biggest thing. Like, he asked for my feedback. I'm like, dude, your guy's got to protect his ankles. I understand he's a fabulous athlete. I get it. Just like his mom. Fabulous athlete. But you got to protect your ankles and not just be like, oh, I'm more athletic than everybody. I, I'll out scramble him. You got to, you can't always just feel that way and go with the scramble. You got to tuck your ankles. You got to drop your hips. Got to crush the guy a little bit. And, and, and get a takedown and then, you know, clear an escape. There's a, he had a clear escape and then he was chasing down a takedown and then the guy dive rolled and, you know, drug him down in the mud. Hey, credit to that guy. Let's, let's yeah. give that guy credit. Yeah. That's yeah. Massive. The guy cut a bunch of weight. He wrestled really hard against the guy who's probably a better wrestler than him, but the dude scrambled. He kept everything where he wanted it. That's, that's a, pro- that is what, okay. So here, here's what I'll say about that. Last thing. Well, I'll, I'll move on. That's when don't wrestle his match. He great wrestled his match. That's what we mean by that. If you wanted to show somebody, hey, don't wrestle his match. That's what that was. And he, credit to that guy. You know, we gotta we gotta give people credit. You know, we I, I gotta give a kid like that credit. He was gigantic. He cut weight. He beat a really good guy. And good, good for that dude. Six foot four kid from Tennessee with with a, a big old bowl of salad on his head. Man, it, it reminded me of Christian Small. <laughs> yeah, think about that. Christian Small is super unorthodox, right? Like mm-hmm. he really like uh, does things to people. They're like, how, how do you train for that? How you do you can't. train for that? Right? You really can't train for that. You don't train for that guy. It's like Iron Mike said, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face, right? Yeah. You know? <laughs> how do you simulate a lot of these things? And you know, as far as not wrestling somebody else's match, and what I'm pumped about with Small is. You know, he's, he's a runner up. He's a returning NCAA finalist for, for Lake Erie College. And uh, Donathan's really good, right? They're both yep. back, right? Yep. I, I like that. I like that. And here's the other thing I like about D2 wrestling I've only been to one D2 NCAA tournament. I got to call the finals and call a bunch of matches. Um, it was in public hall. Were you at that? Were you at the public yeah. hall one? Yeah. 14? Does that sound right? Yeah, that was like my very first one. Yeah, yeah. that was like Joey Davis and, you know, Notre well, they Dame won five. ran through. Yeah. Notre Dame won five. They went from Joey yeah. Davis all the way up to, to Ly- Lyberger, I think. Lyberger. Yeah, Garrett Lyberger. Yeah. The, uh, the kid from Georgia who's like a 184 pounder, uh, Fuentes or something. Rodriguez. Like that. Rodriguez. Yeah. He won it. Yeah, they won. They won uh, the dude from Easton. What was the dude from Easton? The tattoo artist. Forget his name. <laughs> dude was that dude was he was good. Yeah. He, he won it. I mean, they just had a dynamite team and they won, dude. They won 57 through 97. Yeah. Decent think, run. Yeah. Uh, ben, uh Sergeant Sergeant won for uh Ben Sergeant won for uh Finley. He won it. He won the. He won with the, his patented dump. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was good, man. That was fun to watch. It was a uh, uh, kind of a who's who of a uh, finals. It's like some all time greats. Obviously, Joey Davis beat Walters from uh, Finley. But uh, here's what. Okay, so here's my take on D two wrestling with with that tournament in my mind. The amount of parity and the amount of it doesn't matter where you're from, from is what I love. Yeah, it was Evan Rossboro was a true freshman that year, yeah. and I he was I trained with him a lot. Um, he's doing jujitsu now. He does a good job. He took eighth as a true freshman. He's like ranked in the world now. By Dude, the way, hey, jujitsu. Hey, he moves really well. He's a great scrambler and a really good athlete. And I watched some of his clips, and I'm like, dude, I had a heart attack watching that clip. Because <laughs> if you watch, um, a lot of the jujitsu, whether it's gi, no gi, whatever they're doing whatever they're doing, they don't move like a D1, D2, D3 guy. 
A lot of that is like holding position. It's a chess match, right? Yeah. Whereas, dude, you watch, you watch <laughs> guys in your room every day, you watch them move. If you could just take them to a Brazilian jiu-jitsu room, they're going to get tapped out a bunch. You know that, right? Because the guys are lying and waiting. But they would get the guy so tired because they wrestle so hard and they move so much. Brazilian jiu-jitsu is what, you know, when I've talked to people about it, and I I just don't know anything, you know what I mean? I don't know anything, like novice completely. But how hard the guys wrestle. To Evan Ross, he wrestles really hard and he grapples really hard. So I think that that's to his strength, and he's just a young man still. And when you watch a D1, D2, D3 guy transition to that, they're always going to transition to it well because they just go so hard. They move so much. They're pulling you. They're moving you. And it's just like awesome to watch. But man, he scrambles really well. And he's a big guy too. So yeah, I I love watching that. But I was there when he was an All-American as a true freshman. And I wrestled with him. I tore my ACL wrestling with him the year before. Did you ever get it fixed? No. No, I didn't think so. (laughs) Who needs that? You know what? I, I I ran a little over two miles today and it still feels good. Sometimes it just swells up. I'll need a replacement here probably in another five or 10 years, but it doesn't help when you have a 260 pound guy running two, three miles and they're under 10 minute miles. They're in between, you know, anywhere from like a eight to a 10 minute mile. That's just a lot of, it's a lot of pounding. You know what I mean? Like if you look at the steps, 260 pounds times 4,000 steps is a lot of trauma on your knees, but Lake Erie college, I love small at 141. Is small going to be 149? Can you let the cat out of the bag? Is he going up to 49? You guys got a log jam. What are you guys doing this year with as far as uh, Christian Small and Gamut? I mean, you guys got well, you got three returning All Americans from not the same years, but from different yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, like uh, three three returning All Americans, right? So Gamut, um, Small, and then Penfold. You know, and uh, Small and, and Penfold will both probably start top two in the country this year. Um, Gamut, I, I have no idea where he'll be ranked. I mean, I don't care. He doesn't care. Like, he went in and, and had the number one seed at the national tournament two years ago, Tanner Cole from Central Oklahoma, and put the work on him and, you know, kind of announced himself. I mean, Gamut, like, people don't realize this dude never lost in high school, right? He was a three-timer. But the only reason he wasn't a four timer is because he was injured his junior year before the the district tournament, which in Michigan would be like the equivalency of sectionals. So he didn't have an opportunity to win four. I mean, the kid won Fargo, and you know he's he's won everything. Like he, there, there, there's no doubt. Gamut can win a national title. Small could win a national title. Um, Penfold obviously can win a national title, and I mean, hell, I, Haskin can win a national title, you know, I mean, and, and again, we're lucky because you look at like a team like Tiffin, they got Donathan, they got Barnett, like they're going to push our guys, man. Like our guys are, you know, we don't have to look very far to find good competition and, you know, find the best guys in the country to push our guys. They're right, right in our backyard. And I mean, I think Tiffin is on our calendar probably like seven or eight times this season, you know, between different tournaments and duels and, you know, regionals and everything else that we go to. So should be exciting. So Tiffin is about 25, 20, 25 minutes from Oak Harbor, where I'm from. And I believe their first All-American was Jake Kramer. Wait, was it Jake or Luke? I don't Luke was NCAA champ for Ashland. Jake was the NCAA All-American for Tiffin, right? So, like, we have a strong connection to Tiffin, obviously. I mean, I think they had five guys on Tiffin's team in the last, like, Oak Harbor had five guys on Tiffin's team in the last oh, five. Yeah. So well, they Manzer got a was there. Manzer there. was there for about 15 years. So, you know, I mean, that Manzer kid, dude, he was there forever. He was there forever. So those, the two brothers are now up at Grand Valley. Which brothers? So the, the two youngest, there's three Manzer boys from Oak Harbor. Uh-huh. Two of the three are now at Grand Valley. One, one of the Manzers went to, the middle manzer went and was on a tennis scholarship at Tiffin. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. So we must love trauma and pain to transfer to Grand Valley, Grand Valley, Grand Valley and be on the wrestling team. I'm not going to lie to you. If I'm getting a scholarship for a country club sport, 
I'm probably staying put and doing my country club sport. Knowing what I know now, knowing what all this and the knees and the, you know, things are clicking and yeah. grinding, <laughs> but that's how it goes. But um, yeah, Dude, that's a squad. Club. That's a squad though. GVSU is going to be good. Man. Okay. So there it is right there. That, that, that is one, like I talked to Boomer about it. You know, my nephew, Wyatt Miller transferred from Appalachian state to Grand Valley. Um, what I love about it is they can, they can win right away, man. Oh, yeah. They can Absolutely. win right away. No, no, they're good. Man. They're good. Like, they, they they had some dudes that were already there, right? Like the 74 club Kenny, guys. He's, some club guys, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's legit. Um, they had a really good recruiting class this, this past year. Some Michigan guys that were, you know, really good. Um, you know, they got a couple of transfers in. I mean, like, yeah, dude, they're legit. Uh, Ashland's pretty good. You know, West Lib, they're always, I mean, West Lib, I think, yeah, we got three All-Americans. They got three All-Americans, you know, like, like the region is stacked, man. I mean, our region last year, we had four of the top 12 teams at the NCAA tournament, wow. right? Wow. We had, we had four of the top 12 teams and I would not be surprised if this year, if we had four in the top 10, Wow, you know, yeah. that's unreal. See, now here's the thing. I don't know what Grand Valley does, right? Because they've got all these club guys who've now transitioned to being varsity athletes. And um, like you said, the 197? Uh, 74. 74. Well, the 97 is good, too. Yeah, 97 yeah, is a good. two-time national finalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's good. A, he's a fifth-year guy. I'm, I, if I'm them, I'd wrestle that guy. You know what I mean? Like, that's a guy who's he's going to make the NCAA tournament, I think. You know? Yeah. It's tough, tough region at 97. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's really well balanced. Like, uh, you know, some weights you look at like 84 McGarry's a defending national champ, right? Beamer's like a third place finisher. Like that's got really, really high end talent. 97 is super balanced. Everybody's good. Like uh, you could be the eighth seed at the region. You could win the regional tournament. Like our, our region's just set up that way. I don't like when it used to be they kind of restored a little bit of competitive balance because didn't Pitt Johnstown used to be in that region as well and Gannon and Mercyhurst they've mixed that, that region up right? Well, that that those may have been that was before my time when when I first came into the loop we had a lot of the South teams so we had like the Cokers and the Newberries Pembroke, Pembroke. Pembroke yep yep. So it was like all the Ohio schools, we had UND, and then we had like, you know, the South schools. Gotcha. And then they broke the South away. We kind of got, we absorbed the West Virginia schools because there's been a lot of expansion in D2 in West Virginia, you know, Fairmont State, Glenville State. Those are some of the newer programs. Um, Bluefield State is in our, our region. I think they're actually in Virginia, not West Virginia. They're in Western Virginia, let's say that. And then... Um, you know, U Indy broke away. U Indy now goes over to Super Region Four, which is like Central Oklahoma and you know McKendry and those guys. And that's I would probably say that's the other tough region, you know, nationally for sure. Does Finley come to your guys' region as well? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Finley, Tiff, and Ashland, all, Notre Dame, all, all the Ohio schools. Yeah. NDC's in a little bit of a, obviously they're in a, a transition. Um, from what they were, I mean, when you lose the coaches that they've lost and then obviously the athletes that they had, they're in a transition, you know, they're, they're, that's a lot different setup. It's just from, different from what they were. I mean, like, dude, they were like, it was mint, right? Like it, you, you couldn't get better than what they were doing. So of course there's going to be a little bit of a resetting at some point, you know, and, and that's just what we're going through. I mean, I, I don't think, you know, anybody's crying tears for them after taking those beatings for all those years still probably one of my favorite dual meets that we were ever a part of is when they were the defending national champs and you know they came into lake erie and we beat them you know i don't i don't even remember what year it was it was probably like 2017 18 something like that but yeah that was a that was a big win that was that was probably my favorite dual meet ever other thing about d2 wrestling that i love um it doesn't feel like you guys are doing what the D ones are doing to each other. The D ones like cannibalize each other, right? And they're, they're going out to the same recruits and they get in these crazy battles. Feels like you guys feels like the institutional 
control or lack thereof really give so Notre Dame College, right? The, the Frank Romano could do what he wanted. Anthony Rowe could recruit who he wanted. They could bring in all these guys. They had all these coaches that was like, it was a free-for-all. You could do what you wanted. And look what they did with it. They did a pretty good job. They won some NCAA titles. They had five guys win one year. That was 50%. Right. They pulled the Penn State Iowa deal, right? At half the champs. I mean, that was pretty incredible, right? But I think institutional institutional control or lack thereof is a strength of D2 wrestling for me personally to see it unfold how I see it unfold in Northeast Ohio. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, up here, up here, it's good. Like I said, in, in our region, these teams around here are are good, you know, so the, the competition, I mean, um, you know, we, we Boomer and I were just talking about this literally like yesterday or the day before, because we were talking about doing a trip maybe down to Lander next year. And, you know, Lander's got a really good program. RC LaHaye, he, you know, he kind of hit the portal and brought in a bunch of dudes and they finished second in the country last year. And it was sort of one of those things where, you know, he said, Hey, if you guys come down here, let me know who you want to wrestle and we'll try to make it happen. Right. So if we want to wrestle like a St. Cloud, you know, we'll get St. Cloud, Lander, Lake Erie, and somebody else in for a quad. And then we would reciprocate that you know, have them come up here. And it's like, we don't have to like find teams to travel very far to come here. Right. Like we got UPJ, we got Mercyhurst, Gannon, Finley, Tiffin, Ashland. They're all like within a couple hour van ride of our place. So us finding West Lib, right. So us finding competition for Lander to come up here is a heck of a lot easier than us going down to Lander and having them make a call to find somebody that we'd want to wrestle. I mean, no offense to, you know, some of the teams down that way in that region, but like it, you know, Lander's really good. Newberry's, you know, they're, they're, they're good. But like, after we get through there, it gets pretty, pretty slim, you know? That's what I like about the geographical location. Just everything you, you know, to the point that you just made, like when you jump in and how these teams have added, right. Cause this is just, this is in the last like 15 15 to 18 years that D two wrestling has really just surged. Right. And, you know, I talk about people, this, this a lot to people is the future of college wrestling in the D two and the D three level. Right. Can the NAIA continue to grow? And what people do is they enter an NAIA normally, and then they transition to two or three. Right. Thomas Moore. Yep. It, it's, it's, it, what's well, what Notre Dame did. Notre Dame right. started out NAIA and then they, they transitioned to NCAA D two. It's funny because I was just talking to my students about all this today, the different levels, D1, 2, 3, NCA, and then you got junior college, and then you got NAIA. So I, I, I probably have an unpopular take on that, right? Like, uh, I agree with you. I think that it's a, it's a beautiful product. It's really, really good. The problem with D2, D3 is there's about 20 programs where, like, the administration is actually supportive and like kind of committed to, you know, winning and providing resources and doing whatever we can to help sustain the program. And then kind of like the middle 20 or sort of middle of the road, a little bit of support, but the bottom 20 in like D2 or, you know, in D3, maybe it's, it's even more than that because there's so many schools in D3. It's like the school set up these programs as you know just like feeders for for enrollment and they don't really offer any support to the coaches to the athletes to anything and then we end up with these dual meets where you know last year we had uh you know i, I won't name who it is there was a team in our region i think they showed up with like three or four guides at the regional tournament it's not because of like sickness or injury it's because that's what their roster was and it's like that that can't be the case you know that's bad for the sport you know, so I, I I don't know what the answer is. I certainly never want to see contraction. I, I never want to talk about contraction in the sport. But at the same time, it's like that's not what we should be doing, right? We shouldn't be fostering just throwing programs against the wall to try to see what sticks because look at the, the situation out in Missouri right now. There's a program called William Jewell, right? And they had some really good talent. And they, they brought in a tremendous like recruiting class this year. And the programs have been around for like three or four years and they basically sacked the coach or excuse me, the coach resigned. And they said that after this season, they're going to suspend the program. 
okay? Suspend the program, not cancel the program, not close the program. So right now you've got student athletes on campus without a coach and just kind of the way that the rules are, the program's still like active. So they're kind of like handcuffed in what they can and cannot do and everything else. It's, it's very bizarro. But the institution wanted, I don't know, 30 guys, 35 guys on the roster. It takes a minute to get there. They gave them like two to three years. Hey, you didn't get to the numbers, so now we're going to suspend the program. You know, can't be that way. I don't know what they're doing. I think right. I know I, I, I get throw it against the wall, see what sticks. Throw enrollment driven. So it's it's a business model where it depends what you know if it's D two, D three, whatever. D three is all enrollment driven, right? D two, they want well, you can give not what do you guys nine nine's your max, right? Nine scholarships. Nine's the nine's the full. Yeah, the full, full right? right. So if you got if you're fully funded in D two, you can give out nine point zero scholarships, right? You can dice them up. What's a head count or equivalency? I forget which what's it, which one is it. Well, it's it depends on your institution. Right. Yeah, like but I'm saying the, uh, the sports that are traditionally head count versus uh, men's and women's basketball are uh, head count, right? Football, yeah, head count, head yeah, count. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All or nothing. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yep, All yep. or nothing. Right. Um, and then equivalency is we can give partial scholarships, right? Yep, partial yep, athletic yep. scholarships. So I think I have that right. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is just off the top of my head. You know, I didn't like research it or anything, but normally I live in this world and I talk to people about it. But, uh, the enrollment driven model results in massive rosters a lot of the time. Right. And like you're saying what jewel did it and they didn't, they didn't hit their 30, 35, whatever it is. They want you to have as many paying rostered athletes as they can get. And then usually you probably want to double that, whatever you're giving out your budget, travel budget, scholarships coaches right you got to do those are the three big equipment right there's like the four things for wrestling right sure uh, equipment maybe sure uh a uh, facility but they, they want to bring in more as far as student athletes paying room and board books and paying for their tuition than what they're paying out right that's that's what yeah. the model is right yeah and and i i think that you can just go look at jason bryant's feed if you go look at you, you you get the weather in Minnesota, you get the weather in Minnesota, and you get some UWW announcing stuff, and then you'll he'll always report on the William Jewels, right? He'll always report on uh, Baker College or uh, uh, Wheeling Jesuit, right? Which I think they just closed the doors, right? Uh, I'm Wheeling University now. Yeah, right. but they were like, ah, we don't know if we're going to be a university. Um, Wilmington, right? Wilmington College. They closed the door. Yeah. Okay, they got, yeah. They got bought by like Ohio State or something. Whatever. The point is, it's like they're all trying, ah, it's easy. You just need mats and some coaches and then draw the athletes. You know, yeah. that, that is the mentality, I think. And the, to your point, throwing it against the wall, seeing what sticks. Can we get a large roster? to draw student athletes here that are going to be paying. I think that, I think that's what a, what an administrator might be thinking when it, to add wrestling. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the enrollment driven thing, it's just, it's, it's such a trap, you know, and you see it, it's like, okay, well um, you know, now let's start this, let's start this, uh, this program or that program. And it's like, well, you know, what, how supportive is the local community to that? Right. Like what's the, what's the landscape of, high school and youth wrestling in that area and and will it will it survive you know what's the recruiting base look like you know and uh it's going to take longer to get things moving in certain areas than it will in others and i just think that unfortunately a lot of times administrative uh administration folks they just look at it and say you know according to this this chart here right if if we build it they will come and the problem is it doesn't get built overnight like it takes several years to build that's i just don't think that three years is <laughs> i think that no no and, and third, you know, right in, in in that case and and again like i don't i don't know what i'm allowed to say or not so we might have to edit this but like in that case you know you've got kids that like true freshmen that were on campus for like two weeks right they're on campus for two weeks 
uh, barely even know where the weight room is, barely even know where the wrestling room is. And all of a sudden, like, uh, hey, guys, uh, by the way, next year, we're not going to have a program temporarily. Right. Like, wait, what? Yeah. It's so a- who's our coach? Well, we don't have a coach anymore. OK, so how do we train? Well, that's the thing. We don't know. Yeah. And you can't train here because you don't have a coach here. Right. So. So good luck to you guys and but, make sure yeah, you pay you your tuition coming. and your yeah, fees yeah. and your room and board and we'll get you and maybe taken care of. We don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I, anything off off that's not not yeah. really what's going on. So I don't I don't I I'm not an editor. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I'm not yeah. a big well no, and, and that's the thing. Like, I, I don't have I don't have a horse in the race, right? Yeah. Like I don't care. Like I don't I don't I couldn't even tell you what city William Jewel's in, you know. I'm just saying like Same. This is this is the story that is most top of mind, most present from what I'm seeing, and I just like I said, I have a I, I have this take that I think a lot of you know wrestling people would would tell me like, oh no, dude, we got to grow the sport, we got to grow the sport, dude, grow the sport by you know I, I saw a tweet the other day like, hey, Brexville's doing you know a free kids club right for like introductory wrestlers like K through two right if you've never wrestled before come join our club for free try before you buy right let's let's go do eight sessions for free Chardon, right down the street they're launching like a k through two program you know men are they've got tons of stuff happening right now with their kids program and hosting tournaments and girls camps and everything that's how you grow the sport dude you don't grow the sport by just like randomly throwing up these colleges and you know college programs in these like little towns with no support no administrative support. That ain't how you do it. Well, it's crazy to look here because we've got a really good youth coach in Jeff Varney, but he's, he's like rabid about it. He's like super into it. And he's got a kid that's in between my kid and my two kids, right? He's got a son and he's got a daughter too that's younger than that, younger than his son and younger than my son. And, you know, the dude, it to, he's got a wrestling room down the road. He, he lives two miles down the road. It's in his house. It's, it's an unbelievable facility. And, he is building it at this community level and it's really awesome to watch it and see the big trap in Ohio is, will they stay right? Like, will they stay? Will they go to, I mean, with Notre Dame MDCL's 10 minutes up the road, right? It's not like MDCL has some killer program, but right. Maybe they might end up there. They might end up at Hawk and they can end up at St. Edward. They can end up at Ignatius. There's all these different places. They can have Walsh Jesuit. They're all dry. Catholic. Yeah. yeah, Lake Lake Catholic. There you go. They're all drivable, right? And it's like, what division are you in? Where are you going to be competitive? Where are you going to be able to have the best culture? Where are they going to treat you best? And it's like kids got all these different factors. But to watch Jeff Varney build it for the Bomber Wrestling Club at the level is it's it's fun to watch. And I think it it's a sustainable thing, right? He's into it. You know, his brother and him wrestled at Kenston. His brother was a state qualifier. You know, he was a JUCO guy at Cuyahoga Community College, and he went to Baldwin Wallace. He's a Northeast Ohio guy. He lives here. They own a business. It's like I can see him organically doing what he's doing, but the grass is always greener when they get developed, right? The grass is always greener, and they're always going to go to a club. They're always going to go to, you know, another school, and then everybody, well, I think I got to go to that school. You don't always have to do that. You can win where you're at, I think. I'm a firm believer in that, you know. I just think you can win where you're at. Oh, I mean, we we talked about them a little bit ago, but look at look at that Dundee program. I mean, those dudes are all homegrown. Like nobody's nobody's recruiting guys to Dundee. I mean, you know that area, like you said. I mean, Bedford's got their dudes. Dundee's got their dudes. You know, Jefferson High School, they got their dudes. Like nobody's uh, you know transferring in or out of those programs. And by the way, I, I know I don't want to get too far off subject talking about you know youth wrestling, but R.J. Boudreaux at Lowell. Like they have got a quite an impressive youth program, man. Like they do the, they do like the, you know, superhero singlets and they do the candy bars and everything. And they keep those kids engaged. And I mean, look at what it's done. I think they won like eight or nine state titles in a row in Michigan, you know? So like they got, they got something working. That guy's like a true CEO coach. And I I just met him for the first time last year yeah, uh, and got to interview him and talk to him at Brexville and he gets it. Yeah. He gets yeah, like yeah. the sustainability and the health of the sport. Yeah. Whereas, like, some people want to cherry pick some guys and win a state title. Right. Well, and that's, and that's, you know, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, I think, 
you know, it's, it's a little bit different when you're talking college versus like, you know, school district type stuff. But, you know, I mean, I live in Concord, man. So I'm right. I'm next to Riverside. I'm next to Chardon. I'm next to Mentor. I'm next to all these, you know, schools like Catholics right there. And, you know, I, I love it. I love when I see the success at the kids level, you know, I love it when I see, I mean, you were, you were out last year. You saw what we try to do for our youth night, right? Yeah. The Tommy stood we... us up. Remember? <laughs> Yeah, it's all right, man. Tommy, maybe, maybe this year. Five-year-old Tommy wouldn't run. <laughs> he was like, I'm but, not doing but it. You, you, see, you see how important that is to me, right? Like, yeah. we're going to do autographs for the kids. We're going to do posters. We we passed out ice creams. And we wanted to have kids' matches, right? We wanted to highlight that stuff because I think that, like, that is how you grow wrestling. You grow wrestling from the ground up. You don't just start throwing stuff against the wall and trying to see what sticks. I just, my thing to watch it organically grow and the program I came from, George Bergman coached my brother, my brother, Ferd, who was a state champ in 86 and 87. George Bergman coached him in the state finals. My nephew who placed in the state tournament last year for Oak Harbor, Owen, George Bergman coached him. George Bergman had a heart attack at the state tournament last year. His pacemaker machine went off and he was like, Hey, I'm not going to make it this session. I got to go to the, I got to go oh to the hospital. God. He's apologizing about going to the hospital. I'm like, no dude, go make sure you can live. You know, like, yeah. I mean, you know, like the sustainability of what that guy's done, that is not a thing anymore. Right. You're not getting guys who are going through three levels of Pete. It's just not a thing anymore. Right. Well, I, I think it is at, at, at the places that have the most success, you know, I mean, yeah, uh, is, is, is Todd Haverdill, you know, is, is he got a lot going on with the kids club at Brexville? I, I don't know. I really don't, but I know he's got his people there. Right. I know Aaron is sad is, you know, he's running that thing right now and, you know, he's got all that stuff going and that's, you know, that's Todd's got. So like, I think that the most successful programs are, having that connectivity from the kids club through the middle school, through the high school programs. And, you know, look at the results. Wild thing to me to think about it is like, you know, you, you bring up uh, acid was originally a Chanel guy, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like your wife's a Chanel guy. I brought Anthony Ross, a Chanel guy, not even a school anymore. <laughs> not a, rubble, right? They knocked that place down. Yeah. Yeah. It's so not even standing. And, and not, the, we were talking about this not too long ago. Um, I mean, dude, they put in like they privately funded. I want to say it was like a million bucks in like a wrestling room. And we're going back like 15, 20 years ago. Right. So you're talking cost of construction was way, way cheaper than what it is today. And then within like two or three years, they leveled the whole thing, you know, it was crazy because when they leveled that school, probably in the last four or five years, they leveled it. I remember they had like uh, Fox eight or somebody was there and it was firebird wrestling. They were destroying the wrestling room. I was like, yeah. it was heartbreaking, man. I was like, Oh yeah. my God. You know, I remember the year they won. I want to say 11 Cody Walters was a senior and then they closed the building the next year, the year after. And it was that's when uh, acids jumped over to Brexville, right? right? And it's just like, how the, well, they had this great thing, man. They had yeah, Mariolas. They had, they had Jaggers. They had uh, Anthony Ralph, the Robo. Hoogan Boom. Yeah. Don't forget, don't Hoogan, forget Boom. Hoogan Boom. Hey, do you know Hoogan Boom was the defensive player of the year? In, no. Uh, whatever division they were, division five or whatever. I think they might have five divisions. I think who, no, I'm not thinking he was the defensive player of the year in the really? state of Ohio. I did Those not know that. Did you, did you know that? No, man. Yeah. Like he was the best defensive player in the state of Ohio in that division of football. Our coach at Riverside, our head coach, Dave Bors coached him at Chanel. Okay. So Riverside's head football coach, Dave Bors was like the best defensive player. I've ever seen. He's told me this a couple of times. Kevin Hoogaboom. He knew where the ball no, was going. Man. He goes, I could say, I could tell him we could key him. He just, he said the dude could smell the ball. Wow. You didn't know that, did you? Now, I had no idea. Man. Now he's banking Peyton, isn't he? Yeah. 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 He's yeah. He's doing company, well. Right? Like I said, man, we just, we just hung out, 
you know, he was at the, uh, he was at our golf outing, our RTC golf outing. And then, uh, he, he, uh, he and I were hanging out. We were sitting at the same table for, uh, Boggs's wedding. Nick Boggs just got married, man. Remember what, like, what, a, what a kid, dude. Love that yeah. guy, man. Great guys. The Boggs brothers are, they're good guys. Um, I think Spencer. Yep. But I taught Spencer and his wife. They were in the same class, my current issues class. I, those people are great people, man. I just, Riverside's done a pretty good job. I wish you, you've had two All Americans, um, two Riverside yeah. All Americans at Lake Erie College, and I like to see that. I think that's a good pipeline for you to guy, you guys to have. And I don't know, have you had a Lake Catholic All American yet? Uh, you know, we ha- we haven't had one yet. I think maybe in the future we'll have one. Common, I know so, that. Yeah, Common, yeah. Um, you haven't had a Harvey All American, right? No, no. I mean, Alonzo, you know, he he did AA, but he was with Finley. You know, yeah. I mean. Unfortunately, we didn't have him, uh, but yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's the talent's there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then no men are high All-American, I don't believe. Nope, nope. We've only had a couple of guys from men are, you know, I mean, our, our program's still kind of in the infancy stages. This is only, I think this is the 12th year that we're actually going to be wrestling, you know? Yeah, and I've done a couple different interviews with Hugan Moon where he's talked about, it was his business professor at Mercyhurst came and took either the AD job or the was the president of Lake Erie College. And he was like, hey, man, you're in my you're in my program. I want you to come start a wrestling program. He's like, Are you serious? And Hugan Moon came over. The guy was his professor at Mercyhurst. And he came over because the guy had him as a, as a, a teacher in class. Yeah. Did you awesome. know that? Did you I know didn't know that story. Yeah, that's, I, the, that's the that's the origin story of literally of Lake Erie College. It was one of his old, and the guy came and got an administrative job at uh, Lake Erie College, and the rest is history. Now you guys are, you're in a trophy hunt, which it, when you're in a trophy hunt, they don't have the top four trophies anymore. Yeah. What it's is too it expensive. But it's, it's, it's top, it's top dude, three. They saved $35 I mean, million, dollars, didn't they? It, it was at least $400 million. It was at least $400 million that the NCAA put, saved. What was the number? They, so, put, they said $5 million? I think it was like, it was like 4 or $5 million. Yeah, that's that's what they said. I mean, it's crazy because, like, why not just do eight teams and call them All-American teams, right? Or, or you know, I mean, heck, if, if we're running short on budget, I've got a tremendous, you know, awards person right down the street in Fairport Harbor. I mean, I'm sure she could pass out some trophies for, for the teams, but whatever – four teams, three teams, we think we're in the hunt, you know, I mean, it's, the good thing is, is everybody passed certifications, everybody got to where we needed them to be. And, uh, you know, what are we a couple weeks into preseason, everybody's still healthy. So like, that's all you can ask for. I mean, all of us, whether it's us, West Lib, GVSU, Ashland, it doesn't matter. Like everybody's got to stay healthy. You know, uh, the, the, the lineup that we put out there, the first week of November is probably going to be different by the time we get to regionals in the last week of February, you know, just through attrition or through guys making gains, surprising guys, whatever the situation is. So, you know, it is what it is, man. On paper, it looks good, right? Seven national qualifiers, three All-Americans. I mean, that looks, that looks good. That looks like a team that, you know, should score a lot of points. And I think the cool thing with, with our guys you know, if you, if you really kind of dig into the numbers is that they do bonus, right? James is a pinner. Christian's a pinner. Corey gets a lot of bonus. Jack gets a lot of majors and so forth. So like, it's not just, can we score, you know, points and advancement points through the tournament? We might be able to get that extra half point or that extra, you know, one point of bonus along the way as well. And that could, that could play a factor, right? That could separate you from being the, you know, sixth or seventh place team to be in fourth or fifth. Your defending champs is UCL, right? University of Central. Yeah. So they're yeah, the defending they, champs. Lander's the runner up. Yeah. Yeah. UCL only had nine All Americans last year. Is that it? So, yep. How many coming back? Dude, <laughs> Sidely over there, man. All their guys are like, Six seventh year guys. I mean, it's crazy. Like it's it's too hard to even follow who's coming back. I know they got at the, the COVID back. Years. They're all utilizing their COVID. Years. They're. I mean, yeah, yeah. They're all utilizing. In, in Central Oklahoma as a university, it's huge, right? St. Cloud State's huge. Um, you know, like I I, I want to say Central Oklahoma of the nine All Americans. I think five or six are back. 
but they have two national champs on the back end that are back for sure. Right. So, so they close the show Saturday night with two guys who are probably going to be in the finals again and, and probably be looking to score some big points. So it's hard to catch them. So like, so when I was at the D2 tournament and calling the D2 tournament in the finals, um, I remember there was a guy from central Oklahoma. I want to say it was like Corey Dolphin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was like overwhelmingly the one seed undefeated smashed everybody all year. And he got in the finals against Jonathan Rodriguez, who was just a freshman for uh, Notre Dame. might've been a sophomore. And the dude, the Rodriguez dude just took it to him. Right. Mm-hmm. He just took it to him and he wins the NCAA title. That's what I like. You just don't, you don't see a lot of Vito Raju's uh, beating uh, Roman Bravo Young like you saw in the in, in the D ones, right? You don't see the Penn State guys just get getting beat like that, right? You know, when it was the Iowa era, seventies, eighties, nineties, you weren't seeing those guys getting upset. You didn't catch a Jake Percival beating uh, Zadok all that often, right? It, it was it was there were anomalies in D two that happens all the time. Yeah, the lower seed, like you say, an eight seed at one ninety seven in your region can win the region. Well, Gamut, Gamut was a throw in, right? Gamut was <laughs> dude, like had like one injury default or something on the season. Uh, Winnie All American, I, I want to say he went into the national tournament eighteen and one. It was like a, an injury default, right? He's a regional champ, unseated though, because in D two they only seed the top eight, yeah. right? So he's unseated, and it's not a formula, so. He gets drawn in. He draws the number one seed first round. And people are like, oh, dude, I feel bad for Gamut. I can't believe I'm like, what? Like, how'd you like to be the number one seed? You're wrestling a dude who, like, is a Fargo champ in high school and, you know, has one loss this year, which was an injury forfeit. Like, what do you what do you mean? And sure enough, man, he went out there and just, you know, wrestled his, you know, I mean, wrestled his butt off and you know, we got the win and, and, uh, you know, he made a good run, made it to the semis, ended up losing on kind of a controversial call in the semis to Andriata who, who ended up winning it. And, uh, Corey came back and, and took fifth, you know, but he's, he's all in it for this year, man. I mean, he could definitely a hundred percent win a, win a title. I mean, the kid looks great, right? Like he looks phenomenal. Can you give me a way too early preview of what you guys are looking at as far as depth? from 125 all the way up before to start at 25. Did you give me like a way too early look, a, 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 an October 2nd yeah. uh, look at what Lake Erie College is going to put on the mat this year to try and win a trophy? Yeah, I mean, we've got pretty good depth until you get to the upper weights and the depth thins out, right? Like, um, as far as names go, honestly, man, it's to be determined. I'm not even trying to play the game. It's just like... You know, you've got guys like Feats and Haskin and and Gamut and Small. And, you know, there's guys like you may not even be familiar with Carson Richards, who was a true freshman last year on redshirt. Christian Small will tell you that dude would have made the podium last year at 141 if he were the guy. Right. That's how good Carson Richards is. Josh Howie, I'm telling you what, man, you want to the guy was four into at U23s this past year, his first ever freestyle tournament um his cousins take a dolly heavyweight at, at campbell yeah. right the, the kids a four-time michigan state placer comes from a really good program warwoods tower um you know he he was a true freshman last year on redshirt like he beat i'm not going to mention names he beat a, a guy who was a national qualifier he majored him right a, a local guy like from one of these schools in our region he majored him right so, like, there's really, really, really good depth in the middleweights. Really good depth. And I honestly don't know how it's all going to play out. You got Scrap. He's back at 33, right? So, he's everybody's back. All seven of the qualifiers are back. Who are your seven qualifiers? Uh, Gamut Scrap. When you Small. say Scrap, who's, people don't know who Scrap is. Who's Scrap? Oh, Ryan Wayner. Man. Everybody knows who Scrap I, is. I know that, but you got to. Come on. We're, this conversation is eventually going to get syndicated and just broadcast. Uh, pull, pull up, pull up the uh, pictures of the roster, and you'll figure out who Scrap is real quick. He's, he's He'll from, be the dude with like Bad the, Axe, Michigan. Bad Axe, Michigan, man. Yeah, he's got a big axe on his leg. The hatchet. He's he's <laughs> yeah, Scrap, dude. 
Um, tremendous kid, by the way, man. Just a, just a great person, you know. Uh, but you got Wayner, you got Feats, uh, Klaus, one ninety seven. Feats is a uh, one forty nine. He is from Dundee, correct? He's a Dundee boy. Yeah, he was a one forty one, who bumped up to one forty nine because that's where the opportunity was, right? So he was a one forty one last year. He he wrestled small off in like the wrestle offs, right? Uh, and so he ended up going 49 and, and he took second in the region, you know, and qualified for the national tournament. Haskin, you know, he's back. Uh, Haskin still has a few more years left. Um, uh, let's see. James, obviously, Penfold, couple time All American. James is going to be 174, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not. Yeah, that's basically set in stone. He's, he's, he's lean, man. He, he doesn't really cut much weight. I mean, he he gets a lot of weight off in a practice because that's what his body's used to doing. But he doesn't like, you know, he's not a big weight cutter. Um, in fact, last year he even contemplated going back down to sixty five because he AA at sixty five the year before, and you know, kind of like halfway through the season, he had some injuries and stuff, and he, he's like, I don't know, maybe I should just go back down, and that'll maybe jumpstart my progression. But it was like. No, man, just stick with this. You know, once you get healthy, once you get right, you're going to be fine. And, you know, truer heads prevail. And and he was, right? He he ended up finishing fourth in the country. And number one and two, they both are gone. So it's going to be him and the Fort Hayes kid who was a transfer from OK State that, you know, they should start the season number one, number two. You said Brylan Klaus, the uh, other school in Ohio that has red and greens. Uh, yeah. Colors. The Barnes, yeah. Barnesville Shamrocks, I want to say. Yeah, man. Get rocked. Um, they, uh, they, that's a good program, man. They got some dudes hey, there. I think they can win D3 this year. They could, yeah. Ohio, yeah. Um, but he, Brylan last year, he, he qualified and. He was a guy that was like always battling, always giving his best. Probably not a lot of people had that guy qualifying for the national tournament. Having guys like that, right? The workhorses, having them. That was, that was a guy who, like, I think he lost a lot of confidence in the middle part of the year and then needed Christmas break to kind of clear his mind and like get away from wrestling for a week. And then he came back and it was like, a completely different wrestler the second semester, right? At a hundred percent, everything changed. All of a sudden he's like performing, he's doing really well. He's beating this guy. Oh wait, he just beat that guy. Well, that guy beat that guy. And and before you know it, it's like, wait a minute, are we like the number two seed in the region? Like, are, is, are we like going to get out of this thing? And, uh, you know, it ended up working out. He, he made the regional final, um, got taken down. He actually, I think he lost to a kid that he beat earlier in the year too, but he won a match at nationals, you yeah. know, like it wasn't like a fluke thing. Like, I mean, he's very much, he's going to start the season, you know, not even just ranked in the top 16. He's going to start probably in that top 12 because he won a match at nationals. What do you got to do at heavyweight, right? You know, we talk about all these other weights, you know, uh, heavyweight, Seems to be something where I think you guys can, you can be great, right? Can you get a football player? What do you got to do at heavyweight to get somebody to the NCAA tournament this year? So 12 years or 11 seasons completed of Lake Erie wrestling. We've qualified every single weight. We've all American that I think almost every single weight, except for heavyweight. That's the only weight we've never qualified. And it's crazy because we've had some good dudes like Evan Loafman when he was here, like he was really good, man. He was nationally ranked. And the problem at that time was the region was so stacked. I mean, we have like four or five of the top 10 guys in the country at our region at heavyweight. And they were only taking three guys out. Right. And there's no wild cards in D2. So you can have this tremendous season. You know, uh, Loafman, I think, like led the country in pins one year, and you don't even get a bid to the NCAA tournament, you know? So, um, yeah, what do we have to do? We have to continue to get better depth at the weight because I think that, you know, recruiting wise, we, we need to find more guys. Um, 
recruiting in D2 at heavyweight's tough because a lot of like the really high level skilled heavyweights, they play football and they want to go that route because like we talked about earlier, just the, the way that the scholarship model works, it's like a full ride. Right. And all of a sudden you look at a wrestling scholarship and it's kind of like this chopped up piece of a scholarship. And then, uh, you know, beyond that, if the guy doesn't play football, we're fighting with a lot of these D1s in the area, right? The Clarions, the Edinburghs, the Kent States, the Cleveland States, and a lot of those schools as well. So it's tough to recruit heavyweight in particular. We as a, as, as a program have to get more depth. You know, we got to bring in more guys. We need more training partners for our guys. Um, you know, I think we have good guys to help develop. You know, Draggy's still in the room all the time. And, you know, he was an All-American for us. And, you know, he can kind of push those upper weights quite a bit you know he's trained in mma so he's still like in shape right he still looks the part he still walks around 215 220 pounds so you know he's he's got the beef but we just got to get more depth man i mean we gotta we you know our guy there actually is pretty skilled he just last year missed probably 80 percent of the season with a high ankle sprain it's one of those injuries where it's like dude i i you would have been better off fracturing your ankle instead of having the high ankle sprain. Worst because injury if, I've ever had, ever yeah. in my life. Torn my ACL multiple times, torn MCL, LCL, but all the meniscus has done all that. High ankle sprain by far, because they don't operate a lot of the time. Correct. They don't fix it, and it's never right. It's terrible. No, no. I mean, he was literally out for 12 weeks. That's three months, Right. He, he got hurt our very first, if, if you recall, we do kind of like, or we were doing sort of this like crossover, you know, no team score type thing with John Carroll. He got hurt at that. That right? was where he got hurt. hurt. the first thing he I got, did. He got hurt at that. His very like next match back was that Davenport duel, which was like the, the last duel before regionals. Wow. Right. So the dude was like two and three last year. Right. Wow. Like that was his record because he missed literally 12 weeks. He's skilled though. And the region is kind of starting to clear out a little bit at heavyweight. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to jinx things. I don't want to put too much pressure on the guy, but like, you know, hopefully we can score some points there. Hopefully we can, you know, try to try to get a, a guy through. That's the biggest one. Like that's the like all the time you, you've had guys at every weight up and down, right? Nine of the weights. You've always had a guy either qualify or, or a guy that's in in the mix. But heavyweight, you just you guys just haven't done it yet. And it sounds like you got a plan, but you gotta you're battling football, man. You're really battling football. Yeah, yeah. We got some guys coming up, you know, pretty soon, visit wise and stuff like that. That you know, our wrestlers, you know, they're not like you know, two sport guys, they wrestle, they, maybe they do track or throw or something like that. But like, you know, hopefully we can, uh, we can lock some of those dudes up too for, for the future. Sounds like you guys should be able to, to be in competition to get a trophy. And I'm excited, man. What are we opening up with? Uh, what's the first thing I'm coming to this year? Uh, you are coming at home. We got a quad, right? Good quad too, man. Mercy Hurst Gannon. I mean, they're both going to be top 15, top 20 teams. And then uh, Fairmont State, who is, you know, the coach over there is doing a really good job of building it up. And then uh, Breeze is bringing the uh, the preppers over too. Now, we're not going to wrestle the prep team, but I think like Gannon's wrestling prep and maybe Fairmont's wrestling prep. And gotcha. then he's going to he's gonna keep the guys overnight because we're going to do the storm open the next day as well. Gotcha. That's nice. Uh yeah, I like that. I, that prep year is really good for a lot of those guys because uh, you can't redshirt at the uh, at the academies, right? They red, they just they run you through, but you get a prep year. It's, it's effectively a year to get into the school, get acclimated, get your grades up, and then uh, the obvious thing is to to go to West Point uh, Naval Academy and or Air Force Academy. They all do. Uh, they all have a prep school. Um, their prep school is right on the campus, isn't it? There's their prep school is right at West Point, isn't it? Yeah, I haven't visited, but it's my understanding. It's like down the hill, basically. And then uh, I think Annapolis is, is in like Newport, Rhode Island. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I went to the uh, Air Force Academy one. 
Air Force Academy is on the campus, actually. It is uh, south, about four or five miles, actually, just dead south on the campus. That's a big, gigantic wilderness campus. It's on the side of a mountain. Uh, yeah. Air Force Academy. Pretty cool. But, yeah, the prepper, that's a good year for those guys. And uh, I think that that's what they, they have to do with a guy that would be, like, academically like me. Maybe not so smart. But uh, they get them in and they, you know, they they, they do a good job of uh, helping them become uh, what we need, future leaders. But 